This is Barry Parker, and I'd like to welcome you to Capital Link's Trending News podcast series. So today we have uh, with us uh, Harris Plack Antonaki, the Chief Strategy Officer at Starbuck Carriers. That's NASDAQ listed. Uh, the podcast today, uh, the occasion is Starbuck's recent announcement on developing an iron ore green corridor together with other industry participants. So let me welcome Harris. And before we start, I just wanna make a, a, a brief introduction uh, on Greek, the, the green corridors. Um, green corridors came out of the, the COP26 in November of last year. And uh, I just wanted to inject a personal note, like many others with the COP26, I was very excited, but I kept asking myself, shipping is so big, it touches so many players, there's so much geography, uh, where do you start with decarbonization? So the Green Corridors does that. Uh, it touches real ships and real cargoes, and it provides the first step in what can then become a, a much bigger scaling up, which is what we need. Uh, so with that, let me, let me ask Harris. Uh, Starbuck recently announced that it has joined a group to explore a Green Corridor between uh, Australia and East Asia. So that's led by the Global Maritime Forum, and it includes BHP, Rio Tinto, and Oldendorf Carriers. So could you tell us, Harris, uh, what you intend to do and how would it enable the uh, zero greenhouse gas emission shipping? Of course. Thank you, Barry, for inviting me to this podcast today and for giving me the opportunity to talk about this exciting new project. So allow me to start by giving a bit more color on uh, what a green corridor exactly is. This is a shipping route where it is practical to operate a zero greenhouse gas emission ship, both technologically, but also economically. Uh, so uh, specifically through route specific green corridors, uh, we basically simplify the challenge of decarbonization by focusing on fewer routes, cargoes, fuels, along with, of course, appropriate financial incentives and safety regulations. So in essence, green corridors allow us to accelerate, as you already mentioned, both the supply and the demand for green shipping on specific routes. And we consider this uh, an important first step in reaching the goal of 5% of shipping fuels being zero emission by 2030, which we think is a tipping point for the subsequent transition to full decarbonization. Now, the, the objective of this specific project is to sponsor zero emission shipping of iron ore, as you mentioned, from Australia to East Asia, a route that accounts for more than 22 metric tons of uh, CO2 equivalents each year, or more than 2.5% of global shipping emissions. We want to create a framework by late 2022. And after that, we want to figure out fuel of take agreements, bankering, chartering, joint ventures, as soon as possible. Of course, the establishment of a green corridor requires a wider effort from the whole value chain and from the public sector. Therefore, this project hopes to have a catalyzing effect on that broader corridor development. Okay. Uh, could you walk us through your planning process, uh, getting this group together uh, and including uh, the choice of working with uh, BHP, Rio Tinto and uh, Oldendorf Carriers? Of course. This uh, specific project consortium, which, um, as you very rightly said, is led by the Global Maritime Forum, um, includes these four specific members, base period in the Olden Dorf and Starbuck, uh, because all the members share their decarbonization vision and they have specific targets and are committed to playing an active role in the journey ahead. Now, how did uh, this project come together? Um, the group as I mentioned, share their ambition and engagement in the Getting to Zero Coalition and specifically through activities related to how to motivate first movers. So specifically the partners participated uh, in a Getting to Zero Working Group for the first movers and also provided industry perspectives for the development of the next wave Green Corridors report, which is an independent analysis of how green corridors can be created. The report specifically, the next wave report, addressed, among others, the carbonized shipping of iron ore between Australia and East Asia, a trade route where all four companies are active. 
Specifically, this trade route provides a compelling opportunity to become one of the first green corridors for a number of reasons. For example, Australia's wind and solar resources for producing zero emission fuels, but also the interest of both government and industry stakeholders in the region for zero emission solutions. Okay, now Starbuck has uh, ESG policies. So could you tell us about how does the, the collaboration uh, among these companies uh, complement uh, Starbucks ESG policies and uh, about the benefits to the, uh, the shareholders of Starbuck? Of course, and, and let me start with our vision, which is uh, that Starbuck wants to be the leader in sustainable dry bulk shipping. So we, we have committed to an ambitious decarbonization plan. Our objective is to lead in the industry's efforts to decarbonize and to help catalyze development in green fuels and technologies. Now, of course, this job is, is too big for one company and we need to bring many companies in different parts of the industry together. Now, how will this benefit our shareholders? We firmly believe that being at the forefront of ESG developments will bring our company competitive advantages on many fronts and will benefit. Uh, for starters, it will allow us to stay abreast of the latest developments and put us in a position to make the right investment decisions early on, both in terms of timing, but also regarding the selection of the most promising fuels and technologies. Uh, we will also have an advantage when it comes to chartering our vessels, uh, but also achieving preferential terms in our loan agreements. Furthermore, the specific consortium allows us to build closer ties to three of our most important charters, which are BHP, Rio Tinto, and Oldendorf. Okay. Well, you mentioned that uh, Starbuck is uh, committed to uh, partnering with other companies uh, going forward uh, in the future. Have you uh, been approached already by other companies through the Global Maritime Forum? Absolutely. We are already participating in consortiums, projects, and partnerships with um, other maritime groups, including shipping companies, classification societies, uh, engine manufacturers, technology companies. And at the same time, we are discussing new collaborations and we're open to partnering with industry participants who are aligned with our overall ambition. This could be efforts that address an improvement in the energy efficiency of vessels and therefore focus on either technical solutions such as energy saving devices or operational solutions such as voyage optimization platforms, hull coating, hull cleaning, or it could be projects to address the longer term targets of 2050, such as zero emission fuels and onboard carbon capture systems. Now, th these are very interesting times for our sector, and uh, we expect a lot of opportunities to arise as the research and development on fuels and technologies evolves and the infrastructure is created. And of course, taking advantage of what other industries are doing will also be key. Let us not forget that shipping is only a fraction of the global energy transition. Okay, we're we're talking about uh, Australia to uh, East Asia here on on, on this uh, call, but uh, what other routes uh, globally have similar uh, collaborations? Very interesting question. Now, um, the next Wave Green Corridors report, to which I made reference earlier, um, and, and in which Starbuck had participated, looked not only at the Australia Japan Iron Ore route, but also the Asia uh, Europe container route. Now, as with the Australia Japan route, the report suggested that the Asia Europe container route could also provide sufficient scale for impact and also the necessary specificity when it comes to fuel pathway cargo, policy making, uh, vessel type, all this would enable a feasible and accelerated roadmap. Also a third route uh, was the Northeast Asia US car carrier route. This was also presented as a case study in the next wave report, given its relative impact and strong stakeholder commitment to reduce emissions. And of course, a major development is the climate back declaration for green shipping corridors, which as you mentioned earlier, was announced in COP26 and has been signed by 23 nations by now. The Clyde Bank Declaration commits to establishing zero emission maritime routes for ships using clean marine fuels such as green methanol and ammonia. And the plan there is to establish six of these green corridors by 2025 and scale up further by supporting the establishment of more routes, 
longer routes and by having uh, more ships on the same routes. And since the announcement of the Clyde Debat Declaration, we have already seen two corridors set in motion. Uh, one has been the Los Angeles and Shanghai, and the other one has been Antwerp and Montreal. Okay, all right. Well, finally, um, yeah, uh, just talk about, if, if you could, uh, further plans with uh, the companies uh, with Starbucks ESG focus and uh, your, your efforts on uh, ESG matters. Great, of course, as an industry, a lot of work is currently being done on the environmental front, driven primarily by the upcoming regulations. But one should not forget the SMG part of the equation, which are equally important. So health, uh, safety, security, and overall well-being of our people, both at sea and on shore, is a top priority for Starbuck. And uh, we're constantly looking into improving our working environment to make sure our teams are well protected, motivated, empowered. For example, we have recently introduced a new program which offers free of charge psychological support to our employees and their families. We are promoting sports activities. Uh, we're even examining optimal ways to leverage the advantages of remote work. On the governance front, we're continuously improving our risk management practices and systems. For example, cybersecurity controls are very important nowadays. Uh, but at the same time, we're also strengthening our human resources practices, starting from the way we recruit people and uh, down to how we manage talent and performance. Another area which is at the core of our governance is transparency. We are collaborating closely with our partners, whether charterers, financial institutions, or holders, to provide them with requested data uh, related to ESG. Uh, and this links, of course, with our overall ambition that by uh, ensuring our people are healthy and happy and are also supported by robust governance, our company will have the resilience to weather future storms but also the flexibility to adapt uh, to the ever-changing environment around us. Okay, great. Now that's uh, very, very uh, informative. So uh, Harris, thank, thank you so much for, uh, for speaking with me. Uh, so to the audience, uh, thanks, uh, thank, thanks for listening and bye-bye uh, everybody. Thank you, Barry, for the interesting discussion. Goodbye, everyone.